we're opening up the sarcophagus with this. Wow, hello. <laughs> Well, good day, my friends. We are in Queens, New York at the Museum of the Moving Image. Days with Jordan the Lion and you all begins now. Wow, I think we're in for a real treat. Look at this. And we just came out to this, which I don't know what this is all about. Pretty interesting. I think we should go in and take a look. Oh, wow. Wow. What the heck? This place is great. I don't even know where we are or what we ended up walking into. This is all based on movies and stuff. Look. Look at the inside of this theater. Oh, my gosh. And Katie noticed over here, if you continue to look, you'll see like all kinds of actors. Like, look, looks like James Dean right in there. The Marx Brothers. Okay. We're opening up the sarcophagus with this. Wow, hello. <laughs> you can have your cigarettes back, my friend. So it brought us back into the theater. That theater is definitely worth <laughs> exploring. This is actually, even though it's a real it's supposed to be a work of art, just showing like a cool 60s home or set. What will Vanna wear tonight? That's the question. Oh, they have, speaking of moving image, old video games like Pong. Dumont Theater. We have a costume of some sort over here. Let's see what this is all about. That was the usher's uniform for that theater. For the Radio City Music Hall, actually. Huh. Nice. Big La Dolce Vita poster, full wall size poster with an old RKO sign. Now that we've made it inside, it shows toys from our youth. Of course, some of our youths. Star Trek. What a juggernaut of merchandising that ended up being. And then they've got all kinds of merch from the monkeys to the Flintstones, Fat Albert, JJ, Dynamite. I've never seen that before, as a matter of fact. I thought that was Flip Wilson. It's Flip and Geraldine Wilson. These are Sherry Lewis dolls. Here's a Pebbles and Bam Bam. The Jackie Gleason game with a little tour bus, Jackie Gleason tour bus. Debbie. Yeah, Debbie Reynolds coloring book. Doris Day coloring book. Oh yeah, I was wondering who those were. You actually recognized him. You're like, oh, that's Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. <laughs> I was like, who are these guys supposed to be? Nice lip, you know what I'm saying? Of course, it's howdy doody time. And a Margaret O'Brien doll and paint book. That's really cool. That's all old film magazines. Motion picture magazine, film fun, picture play. Like just all kinds of classics. A real nod to all media. This is all stuff from the Karen Carpenter story movie from 1987. So they have like a timeline of her accomplishments they were using. They have one of the scripts right here. They have a little, looks like a Barbie doll. Karen Carpenter Barbie. 
Wait a minute, what? What did you just say? You said the movie was actually, they used those dolls instead of yes. actors? So come here, look at this. She says it, it was an experimental so, movie. Wow. It was an experimental movie. So her brother and... Oh, so. God. Hey, Scott Michaels, find that for us, okay? Here's some artwork of Bob Dylan. So these are some of, like, the figures depicting the characters from The Wiz. But what's interesting is they actually have the costume of the walking camera from the movie. The Wiz. Isn't that neat? And if you notice in the background, they also have some of the flooring that they use for the Yellow Brick Road. Huh, that's awesome. Right there, you can see it in the picture. That was the Diana Ross, Michael Jackson movie. It says that this is a model from Carlito's Way. They used to create the sets from so this wall has different slabs of things that were used in movies. And I kind of had to laugh because they had a headstone, which is from the movie Rachel Rachel. But this slab was actually from 1981 Arthur with Dudley Moore. They used that for part of his mansion. This wall is from Mo Better Blues. This piece and this piece are from the movie The Class Menagerie. So here are the prosthetic legs of Beth McIntyre from Black Swan. That was a great movie. Natalie Portman, that was a great movie. I never thought I would like it. Somebody was like, oh, you should see it. I think you'd dig it. Really good about her being a ballerina. And then look, they have some Elephant Man prosthetic heads. You can see the different, the ending of what he would eventually look like and go through. That's Mickey Rourke's forehead from the movie The Wrestler. But then Katie started laughing out loud and I couldn't figure out why because I'm looking at all this stuff. I go, nothing's funny until I looked over here and we saw Mrs. Doubtfire's prosthetic face and I knew she was made for me if she's laughing at this. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Doubtfire, you know. Robin Williams. Hello. Yes. Where's where's the pie in the face? Very cool. And this wig, Scott, you're gonna be jealous. That shares wig from Witches of Eastwick. Scott loves to collect wigs. So in all these cases, they have makeup that was used for different movies, TV shows, things like that. So had to laugh at a couple of them because. Where's number 15? Right here. This one was, uh, it says all used for Sex in the City 2. Number 14, which I believe is this one, was used for the Cosby Show. <laughs> oh boy. Better double check some of the ingredients in this stuff if you know what I mean. Here we have the wig of Meryl Street from Sophie's Choice. And then down here, I'm kind of shocked by this. Does it look familiar? These are the wigs that De Niro used for Taxi Driver. I thought he just shaved it. I did not realize they, uh, they used wigs. Huh. That one says that is Elizabeth Taylor from Cleopatra. And these are not made to look like. They say they are the ones. And that looks like that could be Betty Davis. Let me double check. Yeah, that's Betty Davis's hair right there. Says this is as well. That's kind of horrifying looking. <laughs> and then they have, wow. Elsa's hair from Bride of Frankenstein. It's red. Yeah. Wow. So these are all prosthetics from Dustin Hoffman and Little Big Man, which is a great movie. And they have his ending prosthetics when he's an old man telling the story. And then look at the centerpiece of this room. Whoa. 
Linda Blair. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. That is the Linda Blair from The Exorcist. And that is the vomit device. It says that's how they were able to get that shocking effect when she projectile vomits. Attached around the head of Linda Blair's stunt double, Eileen Dietz, vicious liquid could be pumped through the tubes of the device and spray out through the mouth. Huh. Disgusting. <laughs> but cool. Very cool. There. That's the inside of it. These are the molds that they used to make Orson Welles' nose from the movie Compulsion, 1959. There's him in the makeup chair getting the prosthetics put on him. That's just a recreation of the makeup that Jim Carrey wore for the mask. But up here, this is actually Babylon 5's real prosthetic from the show. And they have Peter Mayhew's Chewbacca head from Star Wars 4 A New Hope 1977. That's pretty freaking cool. I wish they didn't put it on the seam of the glass, but showing the makeup that <laughs> Eddie Murphy did for Gumby on Saturday Night Live. And then these were used for 2001 A Space Odyssey. And over here they have a wall of several people's life masks, including Jack Palance, Patty Duke, Anthony Quinn, Darby Jones. I only knew of a couple things that were here before we came. I had no idea most of this stuff was here, so I'm getting my mind blown just like you guys are. And if you go up to the third floor, it's mostly like cameras showing the history of like how they filmed, but this is actually the prosthetic of Nina, who was Natalie Portman from Black Swan. So you could uh, see the inside of how they made the prosthetic work. Then over here they have the oversized sweater from Nightmare on Elm Street 4 that the chest of souls pops out of. They have the chest of all those faces and everything right there along with one of his gloves. Oh, and this is a model they used in Blade Runner. It's the miniature of the Tyrell skyscraper. All right, sweetheart, what did you think of this place? This was amazing. I had no idea what was in store for me when we came in here. I lost my mind when I saw Mrs. Doubtfire. The makeup recreation of Gumby just had me laughing, but this is worth coming to. This is like everything from your childhood and the movies that we loved and we grew up with. This was so worth it. Yeah, and if people come back tomorrow, they see in the background that there's a Jim Henson exhibit. We also did that that we'll show you, and that is just as phenomenal. So thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great night, and goodbye.